If you are involved in information technology research, then there's little doubt that Africa is an exciting market to be working in. Small-scale software developers are popping up all over the continent to create Africa's specific IT solutions. But now, the big boys are moving in. IBM, the global giant in hardware and software development, will soon be opening an African research laboratory in Nairobi. The company is currently on a recruitment drive. Uye Stewart is the chief scientist of IBM Research Africa and focus on Africa's Paul Bachbinger asked him why they are setting up shop in Nairobi. Although we are in Nairobi, we are Africa focused. So it's not just a Nairobi thing, it's an Africa thing. And, and the reason we are coming into Africa is because it's part of the research DNA to, to look for grand challenges. What is the most difficult challenge in the world? We go there and we attack it, we solve it. It just happens that we are located in Nairobi, but our focus is Africa-wide. So why are we in Nairobi and why are we in Africa? It is to solve grand challenges that affects the African continent and the people of Africa. This has been described as Silicon Savannah. Do you see Nairobi as a hub to compete with other IT centers in the world? It has the potential. Right now, there's a lot of excitement. And Nairobi, as a community, is also preparing itself to tap into that potential. I think the next level is to transform from potential to potency. And that's part of what the reason we are there. Uh, so yes, there is that possibility. Can you explain potential to potency? It's about actualization. There is a wind of change that is going on across Africa and in Nairobi. And there are pockets of innovation that you see all over the place. But it is very unsystematic. It is not coordinated. What do I mean by that? Innovation without a commercial outcome is basically useless. So part of the transformation into potency is to begin to do innovation that translates into commercial viability. And that's when you move from potential into potency. Can we get into specifics? What exactly would happen if Africa was to be transformed? Let's talk about government. Can we make government function better, right? So we talk about transformation and Africa attaining its potency. Government is critical and key to that. Can we leverage technology to begin to help government to provide enhanced public services to its citizens so that citizens can actually benefit from the resources that are around them? The answer is yes, and it's one of our focus areas as well, and we call it e-government. E-government? Uh, yes. And will it make government more accountable? It's, it's implied in the process. That's correct, yes. Who are you sort of attracting to this hub? Who's already there? Uh, we are attracting research scientists, uh, people who have done a tremendous work in, in the sciences, in computer sciences, in electrical engineering, from all over the world. Does it matter about the age? Uh, it's, really, it's really about brilliance. Let me, let me again, and I do this a lot. IBM research as an entity has been around for 50 years. And, and we are the foremost research lab in the world. We are credited with very fundamental inventions. And we have, as part of our heritage, five Nobel Prize winners. I can go on and on, but here is the point. The reason that we have this excellence is that we actually have a process, a refined process of hiring. We look for people that have a knack for innovation that stick to it and want to do the very best. That's what defines us as IBM Research and IBM Research Africa. That's um, Oye Stewart from IBM talking there to Focus on Africa's Paul Bachbinger. And that's all from Focus on Africa for the moment. Our main stories tonight, Nigerian forces have begun operations against Islamist militants in the northeast of the country. The latest reports speak of raids on a vast game reserve in Borno State. Elsewhere, David Beckham has announced his retirement from football after a 20-year career that made him an international celebrity. We're back with more in our final edition at 19 GMT. I'm Farai Mungazi.